Sam, give us a sense of the economy overall, domestically and globally. Where are we where we're headed? Well, I, first of all, if I knew, I'd be rich. Uh, but my sense is that uh, we're headed toward a recession. Um, you know, the, uh, I mean, if you think about the fact that uh, in the last four years, we've added uh, what, seven or eight trillion dollars to our debt. Think about the fact that, you know, until just recently, uh, Congress, you know, appropriated money in billions. When the word trillions didn't exist, uh, but people got crazy and, and they, in effect, over-infected the world with way too much liquidity. And, uh, and the Fed was asleep at the switch. And the, the result is that we've got a, a price to pay. Are those days gone, at least for the time being? I mean, it was one thing to borrow all that money when their interest rates were essentially zero or close to zero. They're not zero anymore, and they're probably going up some. Yeah, but the debt didn't go away. I mean, the debt that, that was created at zero is now at three. Yeah. Uh, and probably by the end of the year, it's going to be four and a half. So the idea that, you know, this was some short-term phenomena, I mean, we've created, you know, a in my opinion, a, a huge burden uh, that I don't know how the United States is going to deal with going forward. Because when we were paying, uh, you know, under 2% for money, uh, you could borrow a lot of money. Now that you're paying over 4% for the same amount of money, uh, it, that doesn't go away. Is that going to constrain, do you think, Congress and its ability to borrow that money in the future? I mean, take a look at what happened in the U.K., yeah. I mean, when they said we're going to borrow a lot of money, it didn't work out so well. No. Are we going to have some of those constraints on fiscal spending here? I don't see how we can avoid it. In other words, I mean, it's just, you know, it, it's, you know we're, we're dealing with a crisis in the fiat currency world. I mean, ever since Bretton Woods, the whole idea was create stability in the currency markets. And to a large extent, we've done that. Um, and then COVID came and we lost all of our discipline. And the net effect of which is that we've created, you know, staggering new obligations that are going to have to be paid for in the future. Uh, part of it is being paid for with very significant inflation. I mean, you know, nobody really remembers Mr. Volcker. Uh, I am old enough that I was here when interest rates were 21 and percent. And Volcker said, we got to do this till we kill it. And now, all of a sudden, for the first time since 1981, we're dealing with double-digit inflation. And it's extraordinarily deleterious. By the way, my first mortgage was, I think, 15 or 16 percent. So sure. I, I'm of that sure. age as well. I remember those days. I mean, we did a conversion, a, a condominium conversion, where the, 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 the buyers were getting loans at 17 and a quarter. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, so is the Fed policy working at getting that inflation under control, in your opinion? I hope so, but I'm not impressed. Uh, if anything, I think the Fed has been, despite the fact that a lot of people think the Fed has been very aggressive, I think the Fed has been not so aggressive. Uh, if it had been my call uh, beyond being asleep at the switch, uh, once they woke up, I would have been increasing debt requirements by one or more. I mean, I mean, one of the things that I think nobody really understood is when, de when debt goes from zero to two, not a lot happens. When it goes from two to zero, not a lot happens. And, uh, and, and in effect, so, so the first 200 basis points of increase over zero has relatively little impact on the overall economy. It's when interest rates start to go from four to five, et cetera, that you really see an impact. Uh, so what is the pain level that we're going to experience in order to get inflation under control? The Fed has said there's going to be pain. Yep. What's it going to look like? What's it going to look like in unemployment? What's it going to look like in business failings? What's it going to look like in defaults? Well, it, I think it, it starts with the fact that we've never really had uh, uh, a, a significant recession Without a, without a liquidity crisis. And, you know, the Fed's been buying $80 billion worth of debt a month. And now the Fed's going to stop buying $80 billion a month. 
uh, maybe not the first month, but in a couple of months, uh, that starts to change the game. And, and it's a liquidity crisis that ultimately uh, forces a, 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 a difference in behavior. Again, go back to the UK, we saw it with the pensions and sure. the derivatives they had for some long-term obligations. Uh, it often comes up where you least expect it. Uh, long-term capital management, for example. Yeah. Where would you be looking right now, if you were the Fed, to try to find the crack points in the financial system? Well, I'm, I'm continuing to be worried about uh, just overexpansion. You know, the fact that there's ultimately, you know, uh, unlimited demand for U.S. debt. Uh, I don't believe that. Uh, in the same manner, uh, you know, when I when I look at what's going on out there, um, I'm, I'm very worried about uh, the reserve currency and, uh, and the privilege that gives the United States and the flexibility it gives the United States. And if we lose that stature, and they, we've seen stuff where, you know, Russia and China are trading in, in either rubles or yuan, or Saudi Arabia is talking about selling oil for yuan. Uh, if, if we lose control of the, of the reserve currency status, you're talking about a, a significant hit to our standard of living. I mean, to some extent, 10% inflation is the first step toward deteriorating our standard of living. But it's really the ability to, to issue debt, the ability to, you know, to, to be able to generate demand for our product because we are the reserve currency, it gives us an enormous advantage over the rest of the world. I talked to Ray Dalio recently and asked him about the strength of the dollar. He said, it's not the dollar so good, it's just all the other fiat currencies exactly. are that That's much worse. That's terrible. That's right. So how, what kind of jeopardy does that put the dollar in if somebody actually figures out a way to do it a little better? Oh, I think that I think the dollar is in, is in great jeopardy. And, uh, and that's what I've been worried about, frankly, more than anything else. And uh, we, need to, we, need to, we need discipline. And, uh, and it starts in, in Washington, D.C., uh, where there has been very little. So let's talk about Washington, D.C., exactly. I mean, we're in for a rough patch. I think we all agree with that. The question is, how long is the patch and how deep is the problem, right? What policies in Washington could they do or stop doing that might make it better. We have midterm elections coming up. Yeah, well, I think I, I, I think that midterm elections are going to end up uh, looking a lot more like what everybody expected initially. In other words, we've had this scenario where, you know, six or eight months ago, everybody talked about a red wave, uh, and then about four months ago, the newspapers, in their unbiased fashion. Uh, all of a sudden started talking about the fact that the red wave wasn't going to happen and that there was going to be a blue wave. And not, none of the facts suggested that the blue wave would happen. The only thing that suggested it was what the newspapers wrote. And, and then the newspapers found themselves in this conflict where the underlying reality said, uh-uh. In other words, the people are very worried about inflation. They're very worried about the economy. Uh, what did Bill Clinton say? It's the economy, stupid. Uh, that hasn't changed. Uh, a lot of people thought that you know Roe versus Wade was going to be the, you know, the, the significant you know crunch point. Uh, people are concerned about abortion. They're concerned about a lot of social issues, but that assumes that they could be concerned with a full belly. And uh, and I think what we're you know what we're you know what we're moving toward is a challenge to that, to that reality. So Sam, as a, a significant and very successful investor, uh, do you sort of want the Hippocratic approach to Washington, that is to say, first do no harm? I mean, does a split government actually benefit the investor? Anything that, in, that generates discipline benefits the investor. Hmm. To the extent that discipline disappears, I mean, look, look what they did with Joe Manchin, you know? Uh, Manchin made a dumb, a dumb move. He agreed to something before he, in, 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 in quid pro quo for something else, except he gave them what they wanted before they gave him back what he wanted, and he got hung out to dry. Uh, that's not discipline. And that bill is, you know, they call it an, an, an inflation fighter. Uh, all it did was add more, uh, more, more wood to the fire.